William Stukeley was an English antiquarian and physician. Stukeley investigated many ancient monuments, particularly Stonehenge and Avery. Stukeley visited Avery in the 18th century and produced detailed drawings and description of the monument. In his work he proposed that Avery was built by ancient Druids as a ceremonial and religious site. Stukeley's drawings and descriptions provided valuable documentation of Avery's layout, including its circular arrangement of standing stones and earthworks. While his interpretations and conclusions about the origins of these sites have been largely rejected by modern archaeologists, his observations and documentations of Avery remain significant. Stukeley recorded much of Avebury during a time when the breaking up and the removal of stones from the Avebury, the Avenue and the Sanctuary were taking place. How hard this must have been for William, watching these monuments being destroyed in front of his eyes. But there is one drawing I want to look at today and that is Stukeley's drawing of what he called the Serpent Temple. Stukeley saw the way the monuments were placed as a large serpent rolling through the area. For the start of William's Serpent Temple we head towards the Sanctuary. Not the oldest monument in the Avebury area, as we have East and West Kennet Long Barrows, built around 3650 BC and we also have Windmill Hill, a Neolithic causeway enclosure which was built around 3675 BC and thought to have still been in use around 2500 BC. The sanctuary was built over a period of time. The first phase was around 3000 BC which consisted of a ring of eight wooden posts with a central post thought to have been a hut. Within 200 years the first phase was enlarged and a second ring was added, also of eight posts, perhaps creating a larger hut or an enclosure. Phase 3, sometime in the late Neolithic, a third ring of 33 posts were added. At the same time, an inner stone circle of 15 or 16 stones were introduced, making an almost solid wall of stone and posts. The final phase was 42 sarsen stones forming a boundary ring. This may have been built at a similar time as Avery Stone Circle and had an entrance way that led to the West Kennet Avenue, with two parallel lines of stones running from the sanctuary to Avery. The site was excavated in the 1930s by Maud and Ben Cunnington. They saw it as a timber equivalent to Stonehenge of 162 post holes which were excavated. Later interpretations have made much of the sanctuaries linked to Avery via the avenue. The timbers may have supported a roof, turf or thatched to form a high status dwelling serving the ritual site of Avebury. 
Another interpretation is that it served as a mortuary house where corpses were kept either before or after ritual treatment Avery. Neolithic pottery and animal bone have been recovered by the Cunningtons, indicating that the site saw some degree of occupation activity. Recent excavation by Mike Pitts have given greater credit to the Cunningtons original interpretation of the freestanding post. It remains uncertain what purpose the structures were put to, as a site that was in use for many hundreds of years, it is likely that the purpose, like the form of the structure, changed considerably over the years. William Stukeley presented the idea that the circles at the sanctuary represented the head of the large serpent, whereas the West Kennet Avenue that connected the sanctuary to Avebury was in fact the neck of the snake. You can walk the path of the avenue to Avebury. The stones on the first part of the avenue from the sanctuary have now gone, although you can still see some of the stones lying in the fields. It's believed that the avenue was built some time after the initial construction of Avebury and the sanctuary. Originally, the avenue consisted of around 100 pairs of standing stones. These created a corridor of around 1.5 miles long. Each pair of standing stones stood about 80 feet from the next. It does seem that the avenue is a walkway between the two monuments, possible for a ritual or pilgrimage. It is believed by some that the avenue is a much older path a path which would have worked its way through a forest linking the two clearings which later became Avery and the Sanctuary. What we see today, not just with the avenue but Avery as well, is all down to the work of Alexander Keeler. He used his wealth to acquire a total of 950 acres of land in Avery preservation, which he conducted excavation and re-erected some of the standing stones in the area. During Keeler's work at the avenue, he found some shallow graves at the foot of the stones, which is likely to have been placed there after the stones were positioned. All these graves belong to the Beaker period about 2500 to 1800 BC. Elsewhere along the avenue, excavations revealed scatters of human bone, presumably also from burials. The neck of the snake then arrives at the body of the snake, Avebury. Avebury, which consists of a massive outer stone circle and two smaller inner circles. Originally there were around 100 standing stones. The stone circles at Avebury are surrounded by a ditch and bank forming the Henge Monument. Avebury was built and altered over many centuries from around 2850 BC until 2200 BC. 
These dates are from the historic England, although some people say that the Henge, the first part of the monument, dates from around 3000 BC, around the same time as the first days of the sanctuary. The massive sarsen stones, some of which weigh several tonnes, were likely transported from nearby Eiffel Down. The engineering and effort required for such a feat is a testament to the builders of these monuments. With William's serpent temple drawing saying that Avery is the body of the snake, while some see it as the snake crawls around the henge. This snake then leaves Avery to the tail of the snake, which according to William is the Beckhampton Avenue. The Beckhampton Avenue, like West Cannock Avenue, was a curving prehistoric avenue of stones that ran broadly southwest from Avebury towards the Long Stones at Beckhampton. is the Adam and Eve stones believed to mark the end of the Beckhampton Avenue. William Stukeley was in fact the first person to talk about this avenue. John Aubrey, who recorded Avery before Stukeley around 1663 when he made his plan of Avery, he never mentioned this avenue. Stukeley described an avenue of stones similar to that of West Kennet running from the Henge to the west. The avenue at that point was already in a dismantled state, with only 30 stones remaining and only a few were standing. This has led to a lot of people for many years to believe that the avenue did not exist. That was until 2010 when excavations were done by the University of Southampton, which revealed the parallel rows of holes that held the stones. The avenue was uncovered and indicated the avenue consisted of a double row of stones placed at intervals at a particular pattern to those of West Kenner Avenue. The route of the avenue is unknown and at some point would have had to cross the start of the River Kennet. Also, Stukeley reported that the avenue finished in a place called Fox Covert, but there is no evidence that the avenue goes on past the cove that Adam Stone. but there is still some debate on where the avenue could have ended. All that remains of the avenue is the stone called Eve, which was part of the avenue, and the stone called Adam, which was part of the cove. Because of the Beckhampton Avenue, people have questioned Stukeley's Serpent Temple. With so few stones of this avenue left when Stukeley visited, how would he have known the route for the tail of the snake? Stukeley's theory was that the Serpent Temple represented the Egyptian symbol of a winged serpent but without the wings. 
What you see now is from a copy of Stukeley's book and from these pictures you can see how he came to this thought. It also seems that Stukeley, when he drew the sanctuary, he drew it in an oval shape, even though his first drawings of the sanctuary he did draw it in a circle shape. Which has led people to say that he changed the shape of his drawings to get his theory of the serpent temple to fit. The other thing that people question with Stukeley's theory is that he did not mention Faulkner's Stone Circle, which is just off the West Kenner Avenue. What are your thoughts on Stukeley's Serpent Temple? Please let me know in the comments below. Even though Stukeley's theory on this has been a big debate and did some harm to his reputation, Stukeley's drawings and work has still helped to find lost monuments. But researching for this video has turned up a few interesting things which I need to do some more research, so this is something we will come back to in the future. That's all for today. I would love to hear your comments on this or if there's anything else you would like to know. Until the next time, stay safe. But there's one drawing I want to look at today and that is Stukeley's drawing of what he called the turpent. <laughs> <Turpent. laughs>